The web-covered room used to be a school gymnasium, and now it houses the playthings of Echo Keck. These people have long since been robbed of their humanity, living in fear and filth. While they aren't physically confined within the building, leaving without permission guarantees a fate none would prefer. Some nights, the building houses the god itself. At this moment, there are 37 slaves within the spider's den. The number fluctuates as people are added and taken away. Some sit huddled together in a corner they partially cleared of webbing. Dirty and broken, most sit idly with disassociated vacant stares while others sob themselves into brief periods of restless sleep. Even during the daytime, the large room is hardly more than dark as the webs covering it on the outside allow just the faintest hints of light to trickle in. Outside, the god wages war against humanity. Although seemingly invincible herself, and impervious to the elements, her thrall are not. There is a brief reprieve for the areas surrounding New York as the god and her offspring spend the winter months creating insulated tunnels of webbing through the streets to allow her spawn safe passage. The tunnels extend even further from the heart of the city, like arteries, as the god ever seeks territory and a steady stream of fresh humans. While Akko Kek herself has proved to be, so far, immortal, her webs and abominations are not. The US military has successfully kept her at bay during the cold months by bombing her tunnels. A continuous battle of attrition, one which will eventually be lost to time as spring fast approaches. Weavers are dog-sized black arachnids created directly from the mother's body. She creates up to a thousand of these a day, littering the ground with their baseball-sized bodies that drop from holes on the underside of her abdomen. Immediately they get to work, creating the web tunnels that extend throughout the city. Within a week, the weavers are fully grown and can spin nearly a mile of inch diameter thread daily. The weavers are the equivalent of workers in an ant colony. They require little to no direction and prioritize their actions based on their queen's needs. More specialized variants of the Spider Queen's army require an extra ingredient. Humans. The process by which she melds flesh and chitin is otherworldly and inexplicable. Unlike the continuous spawning of the weavers, each horrid creation requires her personal touch. Indeed, there are differences in what can be accomplished with dead flesh as opposed to living vessels. A constant and steady stream of mutated weavers scour the city and report directly to the queen with their cargo. Changed slightly by the spider god, these of her brood are known as collectors. Their abdomens elongate and concave, forming a hollowed out area like the bed of a truck. Their carapaces grow thicker for both insulation and greater resistance to weight. Able to resist the cold for longer than the standard weavers, these slightly larger and specialized collectors explore the city looking for human bodies. Although they mostly find and bring the dead and dismembered by loading the meat onto their concave abdomen, occasionally they find the living capable of using webbing to a much smaller degree when compared with the weavers. They will pin and web the found human with the intent of bringing them back to the queen, alive. 
collectors who successfully bring back a living vessel are rewarded. What that reward is remains a choice of the individual collector. Despite first appearances, the Arachnid army is not of a hive mind. Akokek covets individuality and rewards those who prove themselves strong, intelligent, and cunning. A true meritocracy where even the lowliest weaver may be given monstrous size and command over legions of the Spider Queen's army. She seems to instill her ruthless veracity as well as her hunger for power and flesh within each of her birthed arachnids. While the Spider God spends most of her time hidden away from the outside world within her mazes of webbing, she occasionally makes appearances on top of buildings and in empty streets. Gathering intel on this invincible and invading threat has immediately been a priority of practically every government body. At any given time, the US military has no less than six surveillance satellites positioned over NYC to capture and record anything and everything. While most of this footage consists of empty streets, web-covered buildings, and small black bodies weaving tunnels, the usable intel paints a horrific picture. Some within the satellite reconnaissance offices believe that we have somehow died from a large-scale extinction-level event and are now in hell. I see this to be incredibly short-sighted. These entities are the large-scale extinction-level event. Archived footage from Satellite USA 223 shows Zako Keck and a horde of her thrall gathering on the United Nations headquarters. Located at latitude 40.748962 north, longitude 73.967712 west, a webbed slope had been crafted leading to the top of the building. Whether or not the god understands the significance of the structure and uses it to mock us is unknown. She stands tall, nearly three stories, and surveys the surrounding area. Arachnids flow up the path and gather around Akokek taking some form of bow around her spindly legs. She appears uninterested in these subservient spiders, even though some perish from the cold. The dead spiders are immediately dismembered and carried away by those closest. Then, with some semblance of arrangement, what can only be described as a form of ceremony begins. A line of collectors ascend the web ramp and approach the mother of all spiders. The first collector reaches her, and the line stops. It stands before her in a bowing stance, head nearly touching the cold cement and eyes averted. Resting in its concave abdomen is the torso of a man, separated at the waist and long deceased. Eyes cloudy and glazed, one can only hope his death wasn't as gruesome as his body's fate. Akokek peers at her child with all eight of her alien eyes, head twitching in short, fast movements before they begin to communicate. CCTV picks up the audio that was synced with the footage. The guttural chattering exchanged between the two is something you'd expect out of a deranged person's nightmares. Soon, a conclusion is reached. Akokek bends and retrieves the severed torso with her pedipalps. She turns and rolls the carcass, feeling and examining it. Her eyes begin to glow with a dull red power before her fangs unfurl and sink into the dead flesh. 
She removes her fangs, which fold back into her face and re-examines the still form. Only now, it isn't still. The chest and back muscles begin to spasm, then the fingers and arms flex and flail. In the next instant, the jaw and facial muscles twitch with horrific mechanical randomness, like a malfunctioning animatronic. Ceremoniously, the spider god lowers the dead spasming torso to the collector. The harvestman raises its stare for the first time to meet its queen, ready to accept the gift. With one final pause, Akokek releases the dead squirming torso to fall onto the back of its collector. As soon as the rotting torso came into contact with the collector's black carapace, all hell broke loose. The spider buckled and rolled as the man's previously deceased corpse fought with it. Sickly grayish fists held and pounded at the collector, with each point of contact seeming to ignore the laws of physics and enter into the spider as if it were made of gelatin. The spider's legs, tipped with a sharp point, plunged into the chest of its attacker with the same liquid effect. Tearing and biting at each other, the two thrashed around for a short while before resting in a crumpled, indistinguishable ball of flesh and chitin. Weavers then webbed and dragged the assimilated away to somewhere it would undergo its transformation and emerge from the cocoon, a chimera, an unnatural melding of human and spider. Akko Kek is not the only god that creates such abominations, but I'd argue that hers are the worst. The line of arachnids approaching their god continued to thaw out, mostly collectors, though some weavers struggled to bring human body parts by webbing and dragging them. There were even a few of the assimilated in the line, returning with more flesh to gain more power. The pursuit of power is something the mother of all spiders seems to encourage highly. Her tactics and army seem to have drastically changed in the months since her arrival. She had initially released tiny spiders from within herself that crawled into people's ears and allowed her to take control of them. It is thought that this was a sort of invasion strategy, a way to cause as much confusion and chaos as early as possible so that she could get a solid foothold in the heart of the city. Akko Kek seems to thoroughly enjoy the fear and pain of humans far more than having obedient and willing human slaves. Not since the initial weeks of NYC's invasion has a single scout or control spider been seen. This in no way means they aren't still being utilized, however. The ritual lasted nearly two hours, with the sea of surrounding spiders constantly shifting as the weaver's thin carapaces could not fight off the harsh cold for extended periods. Finally, at the end of the line was a collector nearly twice the size of any other. Besides the size of the arachnid, unique markings set it apart from the others we've seen. Eight round marks crowned the top of its head and seemed as if they were burnt into the creature's chitin. There were also several rows of red stripes circling its thorax and abdomen. And to make the spider's presence more peculiar, the rest of the horde seemed to treat it with hostility as it passed. Red stripes approached the mother with a large bundled form on its concave abdomen. The difference between this form and all the others brought until this point was that this one was moving. It seemed the striped one had found a live victim. 
something that visibly pleased Akokek. She cooed softly as her body briefly shuddered. Red Stripes lowered himself as the two unearthly creatures communicated. The Spider God looked almost fondly at the Collector for a brief moment before bringing one of her legs towards her subject's head. The clawed tip gently rested on him before a quick flash of light transferred between the two. She removed her leg to reveal the ninth indentation, still smoking. Red stripes collapsed, his legs splayed out to the sides and body twitching. Echo Keck spent another moment studying her loyal subject before glancing around at her thrall with far less adoration. She then retrieved the web body and climbed down the side of the building, disappearing into the maze of buildings and web. Not one of the horde moved an inch closer to the red-striped spider than they had been during the ceremony. But each that passed him walked with an aggressive gait. It was clear that this creature was favored by only one. A while after all the other spiders had left, and even some time more, Red Stripes picked himself up onto shaky legs. It was hard to tell for sure, but he looked noticeably larger than before the bizarre ritual. Red Stripes has become an EOI, or Entity of Interest. Easy to spot by his distinct markings. Satellites track and record his movements when noticed. The latest report indicated the striped collector is significantly larger at this point, close in size to a standard SUV, and sports 12 marks atop his head. Although the data files grow at nearly the speed of the Spider God's domain, no intel has yet proved useful in the war for New York City. On a global scale, humanity loses ground by the day. <laughs>